uh, we come to the another great presentation we have another you know very eminent speaker in this particular session dr bill han i will briefly introduce dr bill han dr bill han is presently director of national center for gene research and he is also director of center for excellence for plant uh, molecular plant sciences chinese academy of science shanghai he was elected member of chinese academy of science 2013 and again member of world academy of sciences in 2014 he has been working on genome sequencing sequence based genotyping gwas of complex state demonstrating uh, heterosis using rice as a model crop and he started working you know in chinese academy of sciences since 1998 by using the next generation sequencing technology that the hands team perform high resolution genotyping and whole genome sequencing based gwas and succeeded in to identify a substantial number of utls potentially important for rice production and improvement with this i invite you know dr hands to make a presentation and friends she will be basically speaking on how does a hybrid rice benefit for heterosis of grain yield from the inbred parental varieties professor hans hello uh, hi hi hello thanks dr singh uh good afternoon good evening and good morning everyone uh firstly i would like to thank uh dr rajiv uh, washney for and his colleague uh, for invite for organizing so wonderful Uh, meetings, and I, I would also like to thank uh, Rajiv for inviting me to give a talk here. Um, I, I, I do hope uh, you are safe from the uh, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so in Shanghai, the, our life is back to normal, almost back to normal. But we we, we did have uh, have a very good, very uh, tough time in April and March. So today I'm going to talk on the the rice uh, research on the uh, heterosis in my lab because for many years we try use the uh, genomic approach to try to uh, to understand uh, you know the genetic basis of the rice complex complex trait and uh, especially for the heterosis in rice. Uh, so uh, as a You know, Rajiv already mentioned earlier uh, the, the global the, the production, food production must be increased, uh, must be greatly increased uh, to meet the challenges for feeding the world populations. And by 20, it, it, it was estimated that by 2050s the global population could be, uh, you know, uh, 9.6 billion. So this is great demand will be the great demand for. For food in the in, in uh, worldwide, uh, so in in China. Uh, Excuse me, Professor Bin Han. Are you yeah. sharing your screen because we cannot see your slide? Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, I, I think. I'll... Yeah. So please share your slide, and then we will be able to. See. Now this okay. is coming. Yeah. It's now. It's, it's okay now. Yeah. And okay. You sorry. Put, and please put in the presentation yes, also. Yes, okay. have, oh, yes. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's fine. Uh, this first slide, and then. A more to second slide, and um, um, so the first the commercial uh, commercial available the hybrid rice uh, was uh, the, you know the hybrid uh, corn uh, was generated in 1923, but since that time the the corn production uh, you know has been incre increased increased significantly, uh, especially in United States. Uh, so in the rice there was another story. Uh, So in China, uh, the development of the rice, uh, the hybrid rice, is uh, you know also uh, increased uh, so uh, significantly. Uh, this is a public data, uh, you know, uh, by Dr. Chen Chen. Uh, so you can see in, in, in the uh, most of Asia country, uh, so rice breeding, uh, the most mostly the rice production in, in increased uh, significantly, mostly uh, because of uh, the Planting the, the hybrid rice in China and in some of uh, other countries, uh, but uh, in China we we believe uh, the, the hybrid rice could uh, uh, 
uh, represent uh, almost 60 to 70 percent of the total uh, the cultivated rice. Uh, this data is come from Dr. Yuan Longping and in, in 2009. Uh, and the, for our study, uh, we, we, we are interested in the, the genetic basis of the heterosity. This slide that you can see in rice, uh, clearly the two uh, inbreeding the parental line cross the gen to generate the F1 variety, but the F1 uh, usually uh, uh, display uh, the, a better performance than their uh, inbreeding breed, uh, uh, their uh, inbreed uh, the parental lines. So in, in the maize, are, are, are similarly, you can see the parental line crossed with the, uh, each that generated the F1. You can see the the better uh, uh, architectures uh, and also uh, a, a, a better performance uh, uh, for the seed head. Uh, but uh, the genetic background is still, uh, you know, still, there were some questions for genetic background. And in rice, uh, particularly, uh, uh, half the rice can display the yield advantage uh, about uh, 10 to 20 percentage. But the, in, in, in 19, uh, 19 or 70s, there could be, uh, you know, 30 percentage over their inbred parental lines. So that's the question we, we would like to address, to address uh, what the genetic basis for heterosis uh, for the right. Uh, the heterosis I, I mentioned uh, is, is related to the uh, grain productions. And uh, there is a three uh, genetic uh, mechanism uh, for heterosis to explain well uh, for uh, the, the heterosis as why it's got dominance, uh, overdominance or epistasis. But uh, uh, together, you know, it's, it's, it, this uh, three mechanism uh, hypothesis can explain some heterotic uh, phenomena well. But uh, um, in the general case, but uh, each single uh, each hypothesis is not enough to explain why you know some of the cross can generate the uh, can produce the better uh, F Y some one uh, can generate the late, you know the worst one. But we believe we need uh, we needed to have the global uh, you know search a survey of the the large amount of the rice uh, the, uh, hybrid rice variety then try to understand the you know genetic background. So I would like to briefly uh, to remind you know uh, to, to briefly introduce uh, as for the inbreeding line the genetic study for inbreeding line the rice. Uh, it is similar to the human genetic study and also the population genetic study in Arabidopsis and also in the maize. So in the rice, we also tried to use the, the, the genome-wide association study to identify the complex traits uh, for the, uh, the grain uh, yield, yield and also for some other complex traits. And uh, also uh, in the rice, there is another uh, very powerful tool is, is for called uh, uh, map based cloning uh, of some of the important uh, gene or trait. Uh, because uh, uh, the mutants uh, library is it was easily to generate to be generated. Uh, and also uh, GWAS can can provide uh, the powerful the tool to uh, to identify the complex traits in, by using the uh, natural uh, natural varieties. Uh, this is a uh, data we published a few years ago. You can see by GWA study, we could identify the several the QTR or loci, uh, which are uh, contributed to the uh, the phenotypic uh, uh, variation. So this is a, the, the this some uh, you know QTR uh, loci we identify uh, on average it could explain uh, about the thirty six percent of the phenotypic variation. So this gives the, our uh, thinking about, uh, uh, you know, for the inbreeding line, we could uh, uh, identify some of the uh, beneficial alleles, uh, alleles uh, contributing to uh, to the uh, to the important trait. But the uh, whole this inbreeding line and uh, you know uh, combined together to generate the even much better uh, the hybrid rice rice varieties. Uh, doesn't it doesn't like the uh, you know the corn 
but the, the, the maize is the ideal uh, plant uh, for the for generating the hybrid the hybrid the variety because the uh, the, the maize is out outcrossing uh, the plant, but the rice is the inbreeding line. It is self and uh, pollinate with self and pollinations. So that's why it is very critical to generate the male sterile line, uh, sterile line for uh, for generating the hybrid rice. Unfortunately, because this is a, a male sterile line can be used as a, a female uh, parent to avoid the several pollination because this only uh, this line only was unable to produce a functional pollen grain and that it can be crossed with a, a functional the as a male uh, you know parental line to generate the uh, hybrid rice variety. Uh, so in China, uh, I, I think in, in the world, uh, the, the Dr. Yuan Longping is, is so famous. He generated uh, uh, the three-line hybrid system. It's mainly is he identified uh, uh, the CMS line. is a is a cytoplasmic uh, male sterile line. It can be used this, uh, you know, the cytoplasmic uh, nuclear interaction can generate uh, uh, very useful the male sterile line can be used as a female, the parent for generating the hybrid rice. But then in China also, the Dr. Siming Sung, he identified a food period sensitive genetic male sterile line. This also it can be used for generating the hybrid rice uh, called, this is uh, a gen approach called the two line hybrid system because this is without the uh, maintained line because the, this gene can be recovered easily under different conditions, different environment conditions. So um, with these two uh, great uh, scientists' uh, contribution, so China's uh, uh, rice production has, has been increased uh, uh, greatly. And also we generated a huge of the uh, hybrid rice uh, variety. Uh, for our study, we work together with uh, uh, the scientists from the rice, National Rice Research Institute in China, and they collect the, almost the, all of the uh, commercially uh, av available uh, rice variety. So that's why we try to to have to use the genomic approach to have a global uh, view of the hydrolysis from a large number of the uh, hybrid rice uh, variety. And uh, for our study, uh, we try to resequence and all the collected uh, rice varieties, and also try to uh, investigate the genetic uh, state of the hybrid uh, variety, uh, and we, we, we regarded the two uh, hydrosis. But for this research, we we believe uh, it can enable us to analyze the genomic structure of rice hybrid, and also to identify any hydrotic low sign, and also the genetic effect of the both homozygous and heterozygous genes can be uh, uh, detected uh, through the GWAS and also through the linkage analysis. And the, the initial the strategy for us, we, we tried uh, very hard to collect, uh, uh, you know, as many uh, as possible of the uh, hybrid rice variety. And also we tried to collect uh, any inbreed uh, uh, parental life, but unfortunately, it's uh, uh, it was too difficult to get enough of the inbreeding parental line. So we directly focus on the uh, on F1 uh, gene plus because we try to use F1 uh, genome sequence to predict the, their parental lines. And this is a data show uh, based on the sequencing data. You can see uh, most of the collected hybrid uh, uh, rice can be classified into three different types. One is, could be generated from the indica, indica subspecies, and another one indica crossed with the japonica, and also the small population from japonica to japonica. And you can see uh, the indica japonica uh, cross can generate the, can show the high, highly, you know, hydrosis, zygosity in the genome. And this is uh, uh, the best, this is the data we detected. And uh, um, this slide shows that uh, this phylogeny uh, study shows all the collected data uh, are, can be 
uh, so th this is a phylogeny that the trees show their the relationships. And for uh, surprisingly, uh, for our study, when we finish the uh, when we sequence that the F1 uh, gen plasm, we we could identify uh, some of the heterozygous, uh, you know, the loci you can see uh, indicated uh, in yellow, and also some homozygous uh, the loci uh, in, indicated in red or blue uh, could be related to uh, either of the uh, male or female lines. And uh, some region for everyone, you can see clearly there are a lot of the uh, homozygous uh, uh, genotypes. And uh, this in total, we generated uh, 1.6 million of SNP. So we can use this data, try to, uh, to do the genome uh, imputation on the try to predict the, their uh, parental lines uh, genotype. So fortunately, based on some of the uh, genomic, based on the genome, genomic data and also uh, combined with uh, some knowing uh, inbreeding line. So we could uh, predict, uh, could generate uh, their parental lines uh, genotype. But even we, uh, we didn't know which variety they used, the, 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 uh, the rice breeder used. But we could uh, uh, predict, uh, particularly for some of the combined, uh, you know, recombination, uh, uh, for some of the F1 hybrid as a, the parental lines, the genotypes. So this is the example uh, for the 14 uh, different uh, the gene locks. We could uh, clearly uh, uh, predict that their uh, parental lines, uh, the genotype. But for some of the important uh, the trade, for example, for the plant architecture, uh, for these gene logs, uh, there is no any, um, they are all the uh, same the genotype we identified from both the, the parental lines. So that's why, uh, so in the, in the F1 uh, hybrid variety, you cannot generate the, the heterozygosity the genotype. Um, and for this study, you can see we, we, we identified the uh, heterozygous genotype and also the uh, homozygous genotype because we have larger populations. Uh, so now we could investigate the genetic effect for each of the genotype. Uh, the contributing to the heterosis. Uh, in total, we identify about the 130 uh, allele, we call the super allele, uh, related to heterosis. But you can see, um, uh, if the accumulated all the super allele, you, you can see a very nice correlation with the heading data and the plant height and also grain numbers per pentacle. Uh, that means uh, this uh, uh, identified allele has a very nice uh, correlation with uh, the grain yield and also with uh, the heterosis. But uh, uh, for the, this slide, you can see if, if we use the heterozygous genotype accumulated uh, compared, uh, compared with uh, to the accumulated uh, super allele and also whole genome the heterosis, uh, heterozygosity, you can see there is a less nine uh, corre less uh, correlation uh, with the, the hetero with the grain, with the trade with the, with this important trade related to the heterosis, but only accumulated the super value uh, has much better co correlation uh, with the, uh, the with the grain uh, productions. So this is give the uh, this is a result that demonstrated uh, looks like the dominant. Uh, dominance effect uh, could uh, um, could be playing very important role uh, for the heterosis. But uh, uh, for our study, we if we just work on the F1 uh, hybrid rice, we we couldn't we couldn't get a very nicely uh, you know uh, genetic uh, separation the the, uh, the rate uh, uh, segregation the uh, segregation rate. You can see. Uh, then we tried to generate uh, several the F2 population from the selected uh, as a F1 uh, gemplar variety. Then we generated uh, for someone we generated uh, uh, the bigger F F2 uh, population, someone less uh, less of the uh, 500 the lines. But in total, we generated uh, one uh, 10,074 F2 lines for each individual F2 lines. We tried to to do the re-sequencing 
and to identify the genotype. And we also do the uh, comprehensively to do the uh, phenotyping of each of the F2 individual line and try to identify any trade uh, related to grain yield. And then we could uh, increase the uh, high resolution the mapping for the QTLs and then evaluated the dominance effect and the phenotypic contribution. And also uh, we tried to uh, scan the genome of the uh, total collected at the Harvard Rice. And more importantly, we tried to identify any of the key gene or the alleles or any important alleles contributing to the hydrolysis. Uh, but for this 17, uh, popul uh, the line, uh, popul population you can see can be classified into three different uh, types. Because this is a uh, uh, different groups, uh, because this is the variety generated uh, based on different, uh, uh, different approaches. So this type A, type B, they have the closely related uh, uh, for their parental line and the F2 uh, and, and, and the, and the uh, F1. Uh, genomic line. Um, so th this is the GWAS. We, we use the GWAS approach to identify several uh, the loci contributing to Ben, are you there? We have lost your voice. We can see your next slide, but we have lost your voice. Ben, can you hear us? Thank okay. you. Are you listening? We can see your slide, but we cannot hear you. Please speak up. Yes, we can see your slide, but not hear you, Bill. You close and restart. Maybe. Prasad, do you have any suggestion to Bill? Maybe you can just stop the screen sharing and stop the video, everything else. Yeah, so maybe this is one possibility, Ben, that please stop sharing and then share again and then maybe it will work. Okay, now he has gone offline. He has gone? He is offline. Okay, so we may, maybe we will be coming. So I think that uh, before, when he's joining, I just want to mention Professor Vin Han is a leading genomics researcher who has applied this technology in the breeding program. And as you could see by his slides, he is one of few researchers in China who are undertaking sequencing of not the reference genome, but large scale populations and then phenotyping them and trying to associate the alleles with the yield. So he that's and we are very excited to have him here. I think he will be joining soon or I can send a message over WeChat that how's things going on. I think Bin has come. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, please share your screen and then continue. When you were not here, I was highlighting the importance of your work once again to the colleague. Mm. So, Raj, I can hear you clearly, but I don't know why you can't hear me. Now we can hear you. We can hear you now. So you please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can, I can hear you clearly. Definitely. So okay. that's why I stopped to, to move on. Yeah. So please. Just, yeah, please share your screen and continue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. I can hear you clearly. Definitely. Good. Good. We can also hear you very well now. We can hear you very well. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you.
So when you were not there, I was highlighting the importance of your work once again to all of our. I, I can hear you clearly, but I don't know why you can't hear me. Can is okay. it okay now? Yes, yes. Okay. But this is uh, the beam map for the for one of the populations we. Please generate. share your screen. Please share your screen. Oh, oh sorry about it. Yeah. It is. Is it okay? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, this, this is just a uh, one example of the uh, the beam map for one uh, F two population. You can see this is a high density. The this the mapping resolution increased uh, very much, but we could use this in, uh, use uh, in total about the uh, one thousand uh, ten thousand and uh, seventy two the beam map uh, to for the linkage mapping try to identify several of the QTLs and. Uh, Okay, well, uh, in total, but this is major result. In total, we uh, identified the, uh, 474 QTLs uh, could be related to the heterosis. This is a trait related to the heading data, plant height, and also the uh, grand number of perpendiculars. And from this slide, you can see that most of the identified uh, you know, QTL uh, are you know, act through the dominance factor. Uh, very few that uh, you know the the, the QTL uh, could be uh, uh, playing in the overdominant factor for the for the complex trait. So that's why for uh, for our study we believe the the dominance factor could be play more important role for heterosis. And because some overdominance factor could be caused by pseudo overdominance because there are two uh, closely linked uh, the the loci could be mapped together. So that's a, for the phenotype, they should uh, super, super, uh, the, uh, should overdominate the, the phenotype, but that actually could be still that could be a complete uh, or incomplete dominant factor. And uh, this is one example for, for example, this is tag one gene. This is controlled. Uh, uh, the tag one is a transcription factor contributed, uh, regulated the plant architecture, but it is clearly. Uh, the two parent line, uh, the two homozygous, uh, the genotype that generated is F1 uh, genotype, is clearly is an incomplete dominance factor. But why the rice breeder choose this uh, genotype for breeding? Because uh, this could uh, increase uh, uh, the, the the planting uh, density compared to uh, to the to one of the parent line, and also. Can can you know um, can have the can uh, in the uh, per unit uh, area, and uh, if the uh, you know till angle is if, if the too large, uh, too big the till angles it could uh, get the less of the uh, you know the plant density in the per unit area, uh, but the small uh, the small uh, the architecture that could. Uh, also can uh, reduce the you know the panicle numbers, so that's why uh, the the rice breeder choose this uh, uh, genotype as a, a fair the, the genotype for breeding. So I mean for each the individual the half the rice there are many the loss side many the QTL contributing to the uh, heterosis related to the the grain yield. So that's why for individually we we found the uh, this is the genetic effect. This is there is another example. This is in another population we found that only one uh, the, the more than ninety of the uh, the uh, you know the genes come from the uh, male line contributing to uh, to the heterosis, but only single gene come from the female line is from the male steroid line. But this gene uh, contributed greatly. Uh, to the heterosis uh, compared to the elite uh, male lines. So that, that's why we believe that in, uh, for rice breeding, uh, most of the rice breeder try to identify some beneficial allele from the, uh, from the you know, CMS line, then try to, uh, from the male steroid line, then try to get any, uh, you know, the useful, the gene logs or QTL, uh, for generating the elite uh, F1 varieties. 
Um, okay, but in total, we found for the, uh, I, as I mentioned, uh, there was a two different uh, uh, approaches for generating as a hybrid, hybrid rice. One called the two li three line system, one called the uh, two line system. Because mostly for the three line system, the heading data gene and also the tail angle of the gene contribute mostly to the most of the uh, hybrid rice. And also uh, for the Indica Japonic cross, there are so many beneficial allele from each Indica variety or the Japonic variety. So there is a lot of uh, unknown gene that we map the, uh, in the small region. Uh, contributed to this uh, trait, heading data, the plant height, the tail angle. And uh, in total, those the 16 genes contributed almost uh, more than 70% of the heterosis uh, on average. Uh, this is uh, what I would like to summarize because uh, this is based on the, the largest populations we, we identified, uh, we, we investigate. Uh, this example for the India Japan crop, you can see uh, the red line indicated uh, is, is a beneficial allele from Indica and the blue line uh, from Japonica. And uh, there are only several of the gene are known gene uh, in the border line, uh, in the border line. And the most of the, you know, identified uh, uh, long side, there is no uh, knowing the function or, or, or gene being, uh, have been cloned. Uh, so, that, since we already identified so many uh, uh, important traits of the QTL, we tried to use the uh, pyramid, try to pyramid all the, the super real allele uh, together, try to generate the new uh, elite variety, uh, I mean, new inbred uh, elite varieties. And we tried to prove the concept of whether uh, it is possible to achieve the high uh, rice production without the need to generate in the hybrid rice. And uh, this example, uh, uh, this is the one population I mentioned earlier. Uh, we use this problem, you try to identify, to clone of this uh, uh, QTL called the green, green wave, uh, contrib uh, contribute to the, this green wave of the QTL, this is a panic number of the QTL. We try to clone this gene uh, from the uh, male line, uh, from the female line, then try to, uh, to integrate this line, uh, this allele, to the uh, to the, the to the male line, then try to in, in to improve the the elite the male line the varieties. And uh, this uh, tech, uh, is quite easy to do the uh, fine mapping because uh, uh, the population already generated. Uh, you can see this is a home heterozygous region, and then we generated the, the, another bigger population. To map the, this gene, uh, and uh, this gene encoded the uh, transcription factor called the uh, MATS1 uh, uh, transcription factor, and uh, we uh, we tried that we also identified several alternative splicing that could be uh, related to to the phenotypic variations, and uh, uh, this is a near isogenic line introduced to uh, to the elite variety called the. Uh, Fuhui uh, 676. Uh, this is a, a elite variety of the male line. And uh, this is a gene uh, cloned from the female line. You can see compared, this is a control of the, uh, the variety, this near estrogenic can see clearly uh, the 1,000 grain weight increased. And also we found this gene uh, only uh, not very much, uh, not widely used uh, uh, in the, the, the hybrid rice variety, uh, the populations. These for two lines, there is a uh, more than 20% of the variety uh, contain these gene logs. But for three line hybrid rice, only less than 5% of the variety, uh, you know, use this gene for breeding. And uh, I mentioned that there are the two gene contributing to heterosity for this population, for this uh, F1, uh, for this hybrid rice. But then you can see if it's one more gene clone and uh, you increase it to the uh, male line can increase the uh, significantly compared, compared to the uh, Fuhui 676 line. So th this is, a, looks, uh, this is demonstrated that it is possible 
to achieve a high level of the grain production without the need to construct a hybrid by crossing inbreeding the parental lines in rice. And for the, uh, for the further study, we tried to, uh, because we know that a lot of the beneficial the allele from the Indica japonica, we tried to uh, pyramid all the uh, beneficial allele together to the one variety to generate the elite variety. So this is a 14 uh, alleles we generated, uh, uh, we identified uh, and we tried uh, to, uh, to generate uh, a new uh, variety, inbreeding variety. Then we use this uh, inbreeding variety generated uh, because uh, uh, YY70 cross with uh, many different uh, uh, the male sterility line to generate the new hybrid rice. And uh, interestingly, uh, it's easily to generate uh, some uh, superior uh, hybrid variety because uh, uh, this uh, uh, inbreeding line uh, that has widely, you know, is compatible to to generate it, uh, to cross with uh, many different uh, type of the uh, male sterility line. Um, okay, this is an example. We this we generated the uh, F1 uh, the new uh, hybrid rice. Uh, this is a, a control line. This is a control line channel uh, called uh, uh, FLY4. This is a, in China should be used as a control for any new. Uh, newly generated uh, varieties. And this is the data come from. And also we got the super, uh, another variety generated, uh, demonstrated that some super uh, yielding increased uh, for this study. And um, we also uh, proposed a model for this study because uh, uh, if we could see any the uh, heterotic phenomena in F1, then we could uh, uh, try to generate the, the bigger, uh, you know, the F2 population, try to, to, to have the quick, uh, have the uh, pool, pooling sequencing and uh, for mapping, try to identify some of the super value. Then try to map this, uh, uh, you know, the loci and uh, try to integrate through the backgrounds to the uh, elite, uh, you know, uh, the parental line that increase the, the elite inbreeding varieties. So I, I believe if more and more the uh, uh, beneficial allele being identified, uh, so we can do this, uh, uh, can, can do, can prove these, uh, uh, the models. Uh, so this is why I, I'd like to quickly summarize here. Uh, for GWAS study is a really powerful approach for inbreeding line for identifying complex traits in the inbreeding line in rice. And for the heterosis study, we found that uh, there are, uh, there, there, there do exist a few gene or loci from female uh, parental line contributing to heterosis uh, with different heterotic, uh, with different, uh, uh, within uh, each subgroup. I mean, this means a uh, different uh, subgroup of the hybrid uh, rice. And also most of the, uh, this is identified loci or the QTL that act through the, uh, the way of the positive dominance or incomplete dominance uh, to contribute to the heterosis. There are some loci had to be heterozygous in breeding. This is due to pseudo over dominance, uh, over dominance for overall the performance. And uh, I would also like to mention that we, we may be able to prove the concept that, that it is possible to achieve high level of the grain production without the need uh, to construct uh, the hybrid. But I, I believe the, the hybrid breeding is still the fast and the best way uh, to generate the elite rice variety because it's a fast way to combine uh, uh, most of the beneficial level from different uh, inbreeding line to generate the super view of the hybrid rice, breed, uh, hybrid rice, rice variety. So it's, it's still the hybrid breeding um, is powerful. So finally, I would like to thank the, uh, my, uh, my people from, the, uh, from my lab. And uh, the big team for bioinformatics uh, or data analysis, uh, uh, Professor Xu uh, Hui Huang, he contributed greatly to this uh, project. But he's now a professor 
in the Shanghai Normal University, uh, only one mile away of my lab. Uh, so we still have a close uh, uh, collaboration. And I have a lot of the people work on the uh, functional genomic study, uh, working in the field for phenotyping, and also for the uh, functional uh, validation of some uh, cloned the genes. And also big, have the team work on sequencing uh, led by the by Dr. Feng Qi. Okay, uh, oh, would also like to thank my colleagues, uh, mostly for from the China, China National Rice Research Institute. So all of the other the varieties, rice variety, are contributed uh, from uh, from this, this institute. Um, I, I would like to think of the, the Dr. Yang Sihua. He uh, working closely with us uh, uh, on the hydrology study. And also would like to thank the Professor Xie Huang for, for working on the, uh, for mapping some QTLs, hydrotic QTLs. And also the uh, training high-tech seed companies in Hefei. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Dr. Bin, for a very excellent presentation. Thank you. We all like it, you know. Everybody knows, you know, the Chinese history of successful super hybrid production from identification of CMS9 in 1970 to, you know, successfully improving inbred line to using genomics tool to make a super hybrid. Thank you once again. Over thank to Rajiv for handling the question and succession. Okay, good. So thank you very much once again, academician Professor Bin Han, and uh, we really enjoy your presentation. And thank as you saw, and then one of his great, I mean, he has published several papers in Nature Genetics, Nature and like this thing. But I just like to mention, so one, when Dr. Huang was working with Professor Bin Han, and then they developed this bin map, I always <laughs> used to think that this bin map is based on your name, after your name bin. <laughs> But I, recombination of being. <laughs> I know, I know. But anyway, our lab started to use that is uh, the method for several of our crop, and I think this is really very, very useful. Anyway, so Professor Binham, we got several questions, and some question I pick up when you were talking, and so maybe already answered, but uh, nevertheless, I will take some question from Zoom, some from that uh, YouTube. One is that uh, how can rice breeders overcome? the genetic vulnerability in hybrids if they are using similar lines to develop superior hybrids. Mm. And you know the Raji for our study we uh, we really collect the, the commercially available the you know the hybrid rice. So we they should clearly some of the better performance than their inbreeding line. But uh, we uh, we we have the work closely with the rice breeder Together, you know, any some some the something we interested in to work on to work on. If the, some of the cross, the field is uh, not good enough for generating the superior uh, variety, but it could be useful for us to identify some of the trait, some uh, uh, QTL or loci could be related to the disadvantage of the hydrosis. But uh, so far, we we haven't uh, get this data, you know, to work on. So in the same context, there is one question, how to separate tightly linked loci, which is one desirable, another one is undesirable, using mm. fast genomic techniques. Are you doing some work in that direction? Oh, that's so difficult. I think uh, if we know some that uh, could be the two closely linked, uh, uh, genetically linked uh, together, the, the loci, we could uh, generate the high populations and I try to use the uh, high density SNP marker, uh, you know, to, to map that. But uh, if there is unknowing the, you know, the, the loci, or, or difficult with the lower recombination rate, so it could be difficult uh, to separate them. Yeah. Other mm -hmm. thing is that, uh, yeah, I'm just reading these questions. So they say that you have done a lot of work on heterosis and many other colleagues in China. Is the mm. genetic basis of heterosis clear now? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I think <laughs> clearly is uh, because uh, for the rice, is, uh, we because we compared it with the inbreeding line, we, we, we found that most of the heterotic uh, pheno phenomena is caused by the 
you know, the, some of the beneficial allele combined together. So this is clearly, uh, but super overdominance or some uh, uh, allele related to the, you know, um, epistasis we is hardly, is, re, is rarely de detected. So we believe the dominance, you know, effect that could be more important. Um, okay, yeah. And uh, one question is, can we make inference about heterosis or can we understand about heterosis from bulk segregant analysis, BSA seek? So basically you have this bulk segregant analysis and then sequence them or analysis involving parents and F2 bulks. You, you miss, uh, so sorry, could you repeat the question okay. again? So, so they are talking that, uh, you know, that this approach uh, bulk segregant analysis. So you take the two bulks from these F2s, one is good, another is poor one, and do the sequencing of those bulks and do this BSA seek approach. So by using this approach, can we understand something about heterosis? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is what we tried. We tried to predict uh, based on our, our study. We tried to predict the uh, ending heterotic the group the, for each the uh, you know male or female line. Then we could predict the, some useful uh, route for the uh, provide this useful information for the right breeder uh, for generating more efficiently the more gener uh, generating efficiently of some new varieties. Okay, good. Some people ask because they heard speed breeding before you, they are asking, what is your proposal? How can you integrate speed breeding in heterosis? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's, it's best that we try to have the test uh, the cross because uh, the, the cross each other so be easily because if one is a uh, uh, male sterility the line could be crossed easily with the different uh, the, uh, you know, the inbreeding lines. But the uh, more difficult um, is, uh, is tough work is uh, try to do the phenotype to have the uh, very reliable or stable, uh, the, you know, uh, greater yielding and also with a uh, high the, uh, seed setting rate. And this is more difficult because you have to test in different, in the field. Because the best of the genotype, you can, you can predict some of the, uh, you know, the, Elite, uh, you know, trait of variety can be generated, but uh, um, for generating uh, commercial available, uh, commercial use for the variety should have the, you know, a lot of the field work to test. Yeah. And a few other questions we will take. One is why dominance hypothesis is mostly accepted than over dominance? Yeah, because so far the, in the even the different, uh, uh, crop even in the the, the corn in the maize you can see that look at the genetic potential uh, uh, the potential for the heterotic uh, uh, phenomena could be get uh, uh, less and less because uh, both the inbreeding line being improved uh, very much so it looks like that if you quite try to integrate the uh, useful uh, beneficial yield to, to one variety you could increase the uh, to the could improve the uh, the, the inbreeding line. Okay. Uh, that's why this, this uh, hypothesis is being widely accepted. Yeah. And uh, one question is, heterosis may come into play even in F2 plants. We see enhanced phenotypes, better phenotype in F2 phenotypic screening. So are these enhanced phenotypes coming from heterozygous individuals? Or you think this is coming from epistasis? Okay, but the epi yeah, this is a good question because the, for epistasis we have to we have to carefully to map the the loci because so far uh, it's still difficult for us to use F two population to map any loci related to uh, epistasis. But uh, when we when we try to the fit to the phenotype uh, to related to the grain yield. So we, we could uh, uh, calculate uh, any identified, uh, the con uh, contribution of the, any identified uh, the loci, because that's why we, we haven't found so many, uh, some of the uh, dominant, uh, you know, the loci could be related to the uh, abscesses. But in the future, if the, the, 
it's like Chifas lab. He used the, some of the, the problem in the F2 population that could be very useful to identify the, you know, okay. this. Lab. But for us, that the F2, we only use the vice. Yeah. I see. I think we will take two more questions and we will close. One is that uh, have your studies or you have some information about the role of epigenetics in heterosis? Uh, no, no, we haven't. Uh, we haven't. Uh, we haven't uh, get any data uh, for uh, I mean, uh, epigenetic study. Epigenetic data related to the heterosis. Okay. Uh, and one question is from one researcher from Pakistan. He is asking, "What do you think regarding hybrid grain quality?" I evaluated several hybrid from China. Mm. With coarse Pakistani varieties, but they were lagging in quality. Yield was more, but quality <laughs> got reduced. How can we settle this issue? Yeah. Uh, okay, that's a good question. Because uh, for hybrid rice variety, there was a lot of the rumor many years ago about the quality of the hybrid rice variety. But now that in China, the hybrid rice is the uh, quality, we mean the cooking quality, or even the appearance of the grain as uh, quality. Been improved very much. This why this is due to I believe it's due to the improved uh, of the both parental lines. Because uh, if you have the only single parental line being improved, it's not good enough. If the both line being improved, uh, could be good uh, for generating the better the the quality. Yeah. And one question is that what should be the approach in your opinion for taking a heterosis study? In a cross pollinated crop like pearl millet, pearl millet is this penicetum glaucum acris that also works on that bin. So mm -hmm. he's asking that what would you suggest for taking a heterosis study in this cross pollinated okay. crop? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, in my lab, I, I didn't mention, but we, for next study, even the current study, we tried to, uh, to quantify of the each different leaves contribution because the, we, since we mapped some of the uh, QTL or the size related to the grain production, but the still uh, uh, some of the genes should be clearly uh, uh, mapped or cloned or identified. So then if we could uh, uh, quantify the, the contribution of each loci, we could uh, uh, do easily to do the pyramid to pyramid of the uh, beneficial level together. That could be also provide a useful information for, for rice variety to resequence a different variety to generate the, some heterotic groups and uh, then can be used for, for the breeding. Okay, good. I think we have discussed a lot of questions, but one generic question because you are from China, from Shanghai. So there is a question. What is the status of golden rice in China? Sorry, but... So this is the question not about your presentation, but a generic question. What is the status of golden rice? Golden rice in China. Golden rice. Ah, uh, uh, the golden rice. I think it's good. Uh, good variety, and uh, especially for the some of the countries. I I I I do believe it because uh, we haven't got any uh, permission to. To you mean this transgenic line, transgenic yeah, good yeah, 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 yeah. I hope they can be. Uh, can be some new policy can be made can be made soon. It can be used for some of the some area, you know, especially for some countries. Okay. It's good varieties, definitely. Good. So I think you have answered all the questions. Some questions I could not take up because large number of questions. Maybe they can contact you. But again, Thank you, very much. Kinan, you have been very generous, very gracious that you found the time. I know your busy schedule. When I visited your lab, I know that you are always busy. So, but again, thanks a lot for your friendship, for accepting our invitation. This was fantastic presentation and good answers. Now, floor is back to Dr. Singh, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, Rajiv, again, on the cast of reputation, I will say that both presentations were very excellent. First presentation by Lee Hicking, you know, on speed breeding and linking it to gene bank management, to transgenic development, again, to gene editing was really a high, very high standard. Definitely it must have benefited, you know, large number of listeners. Again, another talk by, you know, Dr. Han was also excellent talk. 
both in terms of you know the content and delivery and i feel that large number of listeners you know they must have been benefited by this talk i understand lot of people have still questions but that can be later on taken through the speakers i i i profoundly thank dr rajiv for giving me opportunity to chair this particular session i really enjoyed it thanks again over to rajiv thank you very much dr singh for organizing very good session and we are grateful to you for finding time and spending your forenoon with us and as you mentioned we are also grateful to both speakers and all of our panel session panel panelists 